Dilal, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Mathieu. Appreciate it. You recently joined Freshdesk. Tell us something about the company. So Freshdesk is a leader in customer management space. We are a software as a service company. It uh, was founded uh, three and a half, four years ago out of Chennai, India, and the company has grown tremendously over the last uh, four years. Uh, year over year, seven-fold increase in our customer base, 20,000 customers globally. Um, so we are a customer support uh, management uh, uh, software you know, off the web. Um, very flexible, very affordable pricing. So what we're doing with Freshdesk is we're trying to, if you will, disrupt the market when it comes to CRM, you know, making it very affordable, very simple, easy to use for businesses of all size. We, our sweet spot is on the SMB side, small medium businesses, as well as the mid market. And that's an area of the, of the market. Um, those are the segments where, you know, some of the other peers in our industry are not really focused on. So yeah, it's a very exciting business. We are backed by Tiger Global, uh, my previous investor, um, as well as Excel Partners in multiple rounds. Um, our development center is based in Chennai, India, and we are building our go-to-market operations here, sales, marketing, partnership ecosystem in San Francisco. I want to take you a step back towards your earlier company, Yonja Media Group. Uh, I think there was a lot of uh, interest and a lot of attention given to the focus that you took outside to Turkey and to Pakistan and the developing ecosystems there. Share us some of your experience and thoughts on that. So I spent about five years commuting from uh, San Francisco to Istanbul. Um, uh, with, with Yonja Media Group, uh, we are you know, a social uh, media company with multiple products in social networking, social commerce, social recruiting. Um, and uh, when I joined the company, we were just one social network that was competing with Facebook. So this, is a, this was a, you know, a, a transformation effort. Uh, we had to reposition that product as well as um, I went into new businesses through acquisitions um, and launch of new products. So now it's a, it's a company with multiple product lines um, we, that we expanded, uh, but again, stay, stay focused on the Turkish market. Um, we have um, launched joint ventures and uh, now you know, we have local GMs, local leadership that is running Yonja Media Ventures and I'm on the board helping manage from the board on behalf of Tiger. Look, from an experience standpoint, it was an amazing uh, opportunity to work in one of the most exciting emerging markets in the world. Turkey is, is growing very fast. As you've seen, you know, it has, it has and frankly transformed the region in many, many respects. Uh, especially in the internet sector, in the consumer sector, there is a lot going on in that part of the world. So it was terrific to be part of that, to be part of you know, some of the biggest brands that we launched in the region. Uh, in terms of what I learned about entrepreneurship or what I saw the state of entrepreneurship, that is the engine of growth in these countries. That is what's taking um, them forward. Yes, clearly we have energy here. You know, we have open forums, there's a lot of folks here, and, and you feel this pulse. But there is pulse in, in that part of the world that you can't match here. It's, it's young, it's, it's vivacious. Governments are more hungry. They have more tools um, at their disposal uh, to spur things. Um, and so Turkey is playing a, region, a role that be, goes beyond the country in terms of support in the region. And because I was spending time in Turkey, I also engaged uh, Pakistan more more so than I was able to in my you know, roles when I was based in the valley. Um, and you know, I think there's an opportunity for, frankly, Turkey to uh, help Pakistan when it comes to taking entrepreneurship forward. Uh, in that vein, I actually helped develop a network between Pakistani entrepreneurs and Turkish entrepreneurs so that we can have, we can exchange, we can compare notes on a variety of topics in the region because Turkey is, has gone through that experience as Pakistan has you know, over the last decade or so. So one of the challenges I keep hearing from emerging economies, countries like Pakistan especially, is government uh, you know, is, is the enforcer of policies and that's where most of entrepreneurs who want to do, you know, um, empower the ecosystem that just like you have done, is that's where they find being restricted. So how do we encourage the governments to be more open and more, you know? Well, I think the, the I would, first of all, with all respect, Mateen, disagree with the premise of the question. I actually don't think government is a stakeholder as big, in as big a sense as we think it is. Um, it, government is not the enabler. Uh, in fact, we want government to be out of the way of entrepreneurs. Uh, and as you see here in the Valley, we don't see the U.S. federal government, you know, in our way. Um, so, but having said that, in, in emerging markets, you have because you don't have infrastructure that is laid out. And this is not just, you know, 
technology infrastructure is also, you know, uh, legal infrastructure. Uh, you know, the ecosystem is not enabled. That's where the government does have a role uh, to have a policy uh, framework that facilitates entrepreneurship. You know, as an example, just in, 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 in Turkey over the last few years, we developed, you know, to a, a new legal framework which allowed the VC funding, which allowed angels to be able to invest in companies. That wasn't the case before. By the way, even in the U.S., the whole crowdfunding legislation, uh, the Jobs Act helped regulate that. So those are the things the government can do. But uh, at the end of the day, it will come down to entrepreneurs. It will come down to academia. It will come down to diaspora. These are the main actors. Um, you know, the government is, is, is more to make sure that there is a level playing field. There is a legal infrastructure in place, um, you know, that, that facilitates entrepreneurship. They also should also invest in R&D. And as you know, R&D is, you know, has played a major role, even in the United States with DARPA and so forth, to spur innovation. Um, but I would, I would, I would just, uh, caution ourselves as entrepreneurs global, who are globally involved to not look at governments, whether it's in India or Pakistan or Turkey, as somehow w ones who are gonna solve the problems. No, we gotta solve them on our own and hopefully guide them in solving broader problems that they are, they are, they are, they are, they are supposed to be solving. You're also actively engaged in civic duties here. You have passion for, to get involved in these things. Uh, you also served on President Obama's commission on uh, Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. Uh, so U.S. government, you know, there's a lot of initiatives in the last few years in trying to spread entrepreneurship as a tool for diplomacy around the globe. Yeah. Uh, you know, so it'll be very good to learn from you, your experiences, how this is going forward. So, uh, Mateen, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, my role on the President's Commission on Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders was, first of all, a great privilege. Um, I, 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 it, was, it was a great honor. Um, just to clarify, the Commission's role is domestic focus, so it did not have a foreign policy uh, component. It. However, I have uh, engaged in economic diplomacy in Pakistan on behalf of the U.S. government, and I've, you know, in, in my capacity as an Obama appointee, um, but I'll talk about this today later at Open Forum with Ambassador Cameron Munter, but this particular commission mission was focused squarely on domestic policy. Um, so our mandate was to engage the 16 million plus Asian American community across the country as President's ambassador into our communities. And you may wonder why, you know, why, why do you need a commission for that? Well, the reason is these are new immigrants. Many of them, as you know from our own examples, we are economic migrants that often don't engage in a broader sense in the U.S. civic life. So the White House initiative has been set up to engage with this community um, you know, through the help of you know, community leaders. Uh, and many of us came from different backgrounds, so entrepreneurs, you know, social activists, uh, social entrepreneurs, academics. So I was privileged to be representing um, our community. And my role on the commission was to be the president's ambassador on all things business and entrepreneurship when it comes to our community. So we did uh, do lo a lot of education of various resources that are available at the federal government level that our community is not aware of. For example, in, when we had the big stimulus package, how do you, how do you, you know, engage with the Department of Energy for energy loans? How do you um, make sure that if you're doing a health IT, that if the resources are coming out as part of the uh, Affordable Care Act, you understand them? And so we did a lot of that uh, communication and education on behalf of the White House, but also. We, we took the community's feedback upwards. You know, I would never uh, forget uh, in one of our meetings, President Obama came and he said, your job as commissioner is to hold my feet to fire. Um, so we often looked at, you know, feedback from the community and say, what can, uh, you know, we do better and pass that feedback to 23 agencies in federal government. So it was a, a, a tremendous opportunity to help connect Washington with our communities which are spread across the countries. And by the way, these are not just South Asian Americans. These are East Asian Americans, Southeast Asian Americans. We are not a monolithic community. We are a community that comes from dozens of countries of origin, multiple languages, as well as Pacific Islanders. So it was an incredible, you know, broad, broad opportunity. Um, you know, if I were to sum up that, that, that role, what it taught me is that we have to engage on the civic sense. We, we can't just restrict our involvement on the economic uh, side because you can't be successful economically if you're not part of the uh, you know, broader, broader life in, in the U.S. as, 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 new, as, as new Americans. Yeah. So, Dilawar, I think we look forward to your I know you're not going to rest. There's a lot more that needs to come out of you. But like always, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mateen, for the opportunity. And thanks for doing this. I uh, appreciate the uh, opportunity to speak to you. Thank you. Thank you.